You look fine. I'm having one of my insecure days where I pass a mirror and go, wow! <laughs> Who the hell is that bow wow? <laughs> yeah, well, um, Darcy, maybe I can use this extra time to run out and find a newspaper. I oh, no, time. forget it. Every store in this area shuts down after six, <laughs> like Utah. Oh, oh that's oh, This has to do with how I'm honestly way too open, isn't it, Martin? No, no, I assure you, I'm impressed and flattered. Smoking lamp is out. Oh, sorry, it is a bitch out there. Just stand us half to death. My blood pressure. Well, you'll have to my... accept my apology. Roberto wasn't in the lobby to buzz me in. I figured he was down in the basement looking for the fuse box, so I might as well climb up the fire escape. I stand in the rain waiting. Maybe this will make up for having to cancel my trainer twice this week. Feel my heart, it's like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Doc, sorry, I desperately need a phone. Doc, Doc, I know you. Lila's replacement. Martin Chisholm. Oh, Greg Reed, I am truly honored. Look, they come as a set. <laughs> We met before at the mayor's inaugural, remember, and the dedication of the new wing at the Met. Am I supposed to know you? This man, only the most important political consultant in the city. I uh, assume you're going to the Press Association dinner tonight, and if you are like me, we can time it to miss cocktails, miss dinner, and arrive for dessert and the awards. I guess I'm like you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, let's begin. Let's begin the session just as if Conrad was here. Everybody agree? Yes. Sir. Anybody disagree? Raise your hand. I really don't see the point. Let I... it be, Martin. The man is determined to make this all about him. Oh. May I propose everybody take your usual positions as if Dr. Baring were here? Well, if Dr. Baring is here, he is Anyone who wants to start, anyone at all, if you have yeah, an issue, a problem, a concern go, you would like to put forward, please I, feel free. I want to. That's silly. You don't have to raise your hand. Uh, my problem is coffee. The doctor, he didn't put coffee out. But silly, coffee is and not... Oh, oh, I can't help. I need coffee. Anybody want the... Nobody wants in this weather. That's Who has a real problem and wants to start? Actually, I do. <laughs> Why you, this seemingly secure and apparently solid citizen, why are you seeing a psychiatrist in the first place? And how did you get accepted so fast into the group in the second place? Accepted? You had to be chosen by him. Chosen what? Everyone was chosen by him. Everyone in this room was recommended by other psychiatrists. Uh, I was landlord, which is why I'm sure he asked me to join the group. Oh, sure. And the fact that you're crazy and dangerous has nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody else here was recommended. Weren't you? Well, um, yes, actually, yes. All right. So why exactly are you here? Oh, poor Fitz. <laughs> I, I have to apologize if I seem nervous, but please understand, I, I, I've um, never been in a situation like this. I'm usually the man behind the man who's talking. What I say is usually filtered through someone else. So uh, being intimate with strangers is, I'm sorry, for me, very uncomfortable. We can wait. All right, well, uh, I've become increasingly um, manic of late, almost to the point of losing focus. It's like I'm doing, doing, doing just for the sake of doing. Hyperkinetic was the doctor's word, which may not seem like much to all of you, but to a media consultant, not to mention me as a person. What do people consult you for? They consult him to get elected. Who else has a problem? No volunteers? And we'll start with the first to arrive. I told you, I left the office. From which door? What else? The one that leads into the back hallway. And let me tell you, with everything all dark and like a war zone, that is one long, creepy walk getting back to the elevator. Go on. Mm. I said, I went down to the lobby, left.
left the building. Did you see Roberto? Who was all over me like a cheap suit. I mean, of course. And then I went and got some coffee, like I said, made a bunch of phone calls, window shopped. I had almost an hour to kill. Oh, I don't mean that the way it sounds. <laughs> the last one to see the doctor alive and an alibi like that. What alibi? I'm just telling you what happened. Who did you talk to on the phone? My machine. Any messages? Oh, a customer from the restaurant I had a thing with. Call him back, talk to him. Well, um, first his line was busy and then his machine was off. I was really pissed. Anybody else? Actually, Deke. Oh, no, he wasn't in today either. Remember that pervert that I had that with? So you got no actual proof where you were or what you were doing? I don't? Then I guess I'm the murderer. <laughs> Now, what do you keep crying about? Guilt. Oh? If you must know, it's because I was desperately, desperately in love with Dr. Perry. Oi, vey! Vasily, what? where were you between six and seven? Yeah, I can account. As everybody here knows, except you, I had my stomach twice tied off medically. And then, a month ago, that surgery I had reversed. And now, for three months, I am to watch what I eat and walk every day. Well, I watch what I eat. You mean we but watch I what you eat? <laughs> <laughs> to walk I never do, and today I did. Across Midtown, never again. And it took how long? Oh, yeah, two hours. To cross Midtown? Two what the hell you doing, Stop! I picked up foods for the crew. Yeah. I walk along 55th Street until Broadway comes, and I make a tiny stop. Why and then I go up that stop. Uh, one second. Can I ask something? Gossie, where did you say you made your phone calls from? To your, uh, boyfriend? Friends? Oh, God, where? Oh, yeah, yeah, the booth on the corner. Funny, I, I asked because when I got out of the cab, I wanted to call the Waldorf to explain that I might be delayed, but was not knowing how long these sessions last, only to discover, no surprise, that the only phone booth in sight, the one on the corner, had been vandalized. Well, I didn't mean the phone booth outside. I meant the one inside the coffee shop. Which closes at 6, like every other store on West End, right? Like Utah. I thought you were the one that was asking the questions around here. I'm just trying to understand how you could have gotten coffee and made phone calls when there were no stores open in the area. Did I say I stayed in the area? Where did you go? Over to Broadway, where the stores are open day and night. I told you I was window shopping. And you didn't get wet. Who the hell died and made this guy a leader? Answer! I can't think! I'm in grief! <laughs> you were in the bathroom when this man arrived, yes? Yes. How did you get the key? The doctor keeps it on his desk. Oh, I forgot. He gave it to me. We're talking an hour after your session was over. You're saying you came back into the building, took the elevator up, got the John key from him? Christ almighty, I told you. I left my session. I was waiting by the elevator. I heard all this rain, and when you gotta go, you gotta go. So I came back in, and Dr. P gave me the key. Why were you waiting? What now? You must have been the last to take the elevator up. It would have still been on this floor. Why were you waiting? I don't know. I just was. May I also point out that it didn't start raining until around 6.30, maybe even later. That's why I took a cab. It rained. It didn't drench me. Oh, no, she didn't. The elevator was up. The elevator was down. She had a key. Oh, no, she didn't. I need a doma. <laughs> it's easy enough to check. Send for El Stupido. Uh, we are running out of time here, gang. I Do it! Is wrong something, senor? Mr. Gerard wants to ask you a few questions. Roberto, who was the first person to sign in tonight? Uh, Miss Dorothea Lustig. Dorothea? Like every week. Uh, you check. As doctor, but she is where? Is something bad is happening? Take it easy, Roberto. Roberto, let me ask you something. You're the one who presses the button for the elevator to come down when each new patient arrives, yes? I press, yes. And when Miss Lustig left the building and then came back as usual, 
Did she sign in before you rang for the elevator or after? Oh, no, no. She signed first, before I ring. Really? But if she left the building like you said, then the elevator would have been on the ground floor when she got back. Why did you have to ring for it? English is not his mother tongue is all. He doesn't have a good memory is all. I don't think you left the building tonight. I think you stayed up here. Roberto, truth now. Did you see this woman come back into the building? This I love. Miss Dilly, hush. I said, did you see her come back in? Where's Dr. Betty? Hey, you ask Dr. Betty. The daytime signature is entirely different from the nighttime. Did you forge this? Of course. That's why he knows her name so well, Dorothea Lustig. He had to learn to write it. Uh, let me see that. <laughs> the doctor, he tell me, sign her name if she no come down after she see him. I pretend she go out. I pretend she come back. Anybody ask Miss Lustig, she is first to arrive. And so all these weeks, I sign her name just like he tell me. Oh, this is wonderful. Perfect. God in heaven, help me. I only do what the doctor tell me. Out of here. Okay, Roberto, you can go. And next time, don't forget your key. Oh, no, no, I don't forget. I give to Mr. G's hole. Uh, the new Mr. G's hole. Yes, yes, they all know I'm you. Uh, the doctor, he gave me name, G's hole, uh, for the list. So I figured this Mr. G's hole, he's okay to sign in two. Two? Only he got no key. Well, Roberto is right. I left the key on my dresser at home when I went back to change. Uh, so I give my key. Thanks again. Your first time and you forgot your key? How peculiar.